Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the mid-tier list for patch 7.31D, and just like I said in the last video, I'm going to be making one video for each roll over the next few days, and as always, I get my data from basically the trends tab up here, or, you know, the Dota buff statistics, those kinds of things, and... Dota2ProTracker.com, that has all of the 7k and above games on it, which is pretty useful for determining the meta, because I kind of base my meta or my tier list on uh, those pro games, and then also some of the DPC games as well, and then I kind of put my opinion in there and just make the tier list for that, because it's mainly for, you know, pubs and these kinds of things, but higher tier pubs, but not sp it's not supposed to be just like, you know, only what they're playing in the pros, but in any case, that's how I arrive at this, now let's just jump in and take a look at the S tier the very first hero, the number one mid hero, far and away, the best hero for mid this patch is going to be Puck. Puck has been played, like, pretty much in every game. Like, if this hero is not banned, it's picked in every high MMR pub, because it's just so good right now. Um, all of the spirit heroes have been good for so long that they've just all been nerfed into oblivion. Like, basically for the last year or two almost, I feel like, you know, Storm, Ember, Void Spirit, all of these heroes have been, like, constantly good, you know, and they keep getting nerfed over and over and over again. This last patch was obviously the Storm Spirit patch before, you know, 7.31D with that uh, Null Talisman change and all that kind of stuff. That was nerfed into the ground. Storm is terrible now. Um, and Puck is kind of like one of these Spirit heroes in that he has a lot of mobility, um, a lot of magic damage. It's just kind of like a different version, a little bit... Um, you know, a little bit of a different kit, but still in that same vein. And so he has just basically become the de facto best version of that hero. The hero that does magic damage, scales really well, has good laning stage, will just honestly wreak havoc all across the map. And so this hero is very good. It's pretty high skill. Obviously, it's very hard to kill this hero if you know how to play him. Um, you can just like constantly be blinking around, using phase shift, all this kind of stuff. You also do a ton of damage with all the different builds, you know, with... Um, Kai Assange with a Dagon that you can go, you can go like Dagon 5 and stuff like that, you can get a lot of different things, there's a lot of different ways that you can build the hero, you can also build four Ags, I, I think Ags is pretty bad personally, but there are some times that Ags can actually be pretty good, then you have that level 25 talent that uh, you pretty much automatically now get that, uh, that coil breaking BKB kind of thing, stunning through BKB, which is really good, so you're pretty much secured that at 25, instead of having to purchase it through an Agnum Scepter, which in some ways is worse, but in some ways is better, because if you need it earlier, it's not as good, but actually the fact that you just get it automatically at 25, and you're going to be reaching 25 with the amount of times that you're ganking, the amount of experience you're getting, this hero is just really, really good um, in so many ways. It just honestly does a little bit of everything, and it's the best hero right now from the mid lane, so if it's available, if it's not banned, uh, people are going to be picking it. Um, so I don't know about you know, lower MMRs, you know, people might not play this hero as much because it does take skill. Like I said, it is kind of high skill. There's a lot of buttons to press. There's a lot of like combos and things. Um, it's not like the most complicated in the world, like conceptually, but to actually execute, it does take some quick fingers. So, um, but that's Puck. Pretty straightforward. There's not too much different about Puck. Uh, you know, nothing really changed. It's just he's been buffed here and there. And then a lot of the other heroes have been nerfed. So he far and away is the best one. So that's S tier, he's kind of sitting up there all alone in S tier, and then we're going to move to A tier, and all of these heroes here are all pretty good, and they didn't make S tier because Puck is just like, I mean, if you look at Dota 2 Pro Tracker, I'm pretty sure Puck has like double the pick rate of any of these heroes in A tier, and he's also got like the highest win rate, he's just absolutely insane, but all of these heroes are pretty, heroes are pretty viable, so we have... Keeper of the Light is the first one. Keeper of the Light might be the one hero that you would put up near Puck. Um, there was some attempt, I guess, to nerf this hero, but it really didn't do very much. I think they nerfed the laning stage kind of a little bit, but honestly, it's not a big deal. You can just, like, attack the, the uh, range creep a few times and then just blast it off, like, blast it off. Use your blast, um, use your Q, and you will just clear the wave, push the wave out. You will still farm like small camps, stacked camps, all those kinds of things. You'll still get a ton of farm. You're basically farming like an alchemist. I mean, it's just the amount of farm you can get on this hero is insane. It's really not that hard to lane. And then later in the game, you just do absolutely insane damage. Now, obviously you do fall off because of the magic damage. You know, when people buy BKBs, if they get on top of you, all these kinds of things, you're still pretty squishy. You're still pretty weak. It's hard to, um, you know, scale super far into the late game, but you know, you're always going to be able to kill supports and stuff. Keeper of the light, just doing keeper of the light things. 
Then we have Tiny. So Tiny actually used to be a carry, you know, a few patches ago that got nerfed, but then he's still pretty strong. Uh, so people have been playing Tiny as a mid laner and as like a four position. And now instead of going for that, you know, um, the shard build at 15 minutes and just doing a ton of right click damage and focusing on that, they're opting to put levels into the stun and the toss and kind of play with a blink first build where they're running around the map, getting a lots, uh, lots of kills and things like that. This here's laning stage is pretty good, obviously really good at CSing, um, very tanky strength hero. And then you can honestly, for the first like 15, 20 minutes, you can burst down anybody. Before you get they get BKBs and you get your blink, you can really combo down anybody. If you have one other hero with you to do extra damage or get in that extra stun, there's really nobody that can survive a blink combo from you. So this hero is very good. And then, you know, because you're so good in the early game, you really don't have to worry about the scaling potential of this hero in terms of like, basically the, the carry version used to have this 15 minute timing, 15 to 20 minutes when you would get your shard and then you would get level 15 and you would be an absolute beast. Well, now you don't really have to worry about that um, being nerfed because that was kind of nerfed. It happened now, like his talents are at 20 and he just doesn't do as much damage, but that doesn't matter as much because now you're going for this like blink combo build. You have a carry to back you up. That's actually going to be doing more damage in the late game. And then if you want to, you can just go for that more carry oriented build, you know, 25, 30 minutes into the game. So that's how this hero works. And it's still doing a lot in that same way. So that's tiny, pretty straightforward, pretty good right now. Next, we have Bat Rider. So Bat Rider, just doing Bat Rider things. I think a couple patches ago before they kind of uh, nerfed or changed the way that this hero works with the broken, like I think it was the shard and the and a Manta style build. Uh, that was absolutely insane. This hero had like a 70, 80% win rate. That They obviously nerfed that and it kind of went out of favor, but it's coming back into favor. It's come back into favor a little bit and it's still very, very good. You can still um, opt to go like Brutes of Travel, BKB, these kinds of things. The biggest thing with Bat is he is kind of a higher MMR hero because if you don't know how to lane, if you don't know how to take advantage of his um, strengths in the lane, if you don't know how to like rotate around the map and help your team and do all these things, he eventually just becomes kind of a lasso bot at the end of, you know, at the end of the day when it reaches 30 minutes. Like, yes, he can do damage. He can kill supports. He's always going to be pretty good and you can get an ag, you can get a refresher, you can do all these things, but you know, it's really that early game that this hero dominates in. And so if you're not able to take advantage of that, then it can be kind of hard to make this hero work. But obviously in higher MMRs with the coordination and all those kinds of things, you can really dominate with this hero and it's still very, very good. Next is Pangolier. So Pangolier has kind of been, had his ups and downs. He's been nerfed a little bit, I think in the last patch or maybe in the major tier list, he was like in S tier and it was very, very good. He was very favored. And so he has been nerfed a little bit, but not enough to really make him irrelevant. He's not as good. Um, I think they nerfed the shard a little bit and some other things, but he's still viable. He's still very good. It's just not as good. He's not completely OP as he once was. It's just still a very good hero. And if you're good at Pangolier, you can still dominate on him. Um, obviously, like I said, the shard isn't as good, but it still does what you need it to do for the most part. Then we have the next two heroes, which are kind of like meme heroes, but they honestly deserve this position, which is Alchemist. This is now an Alchemist patch. If you watched my uh, carry tier list, you would know that it's now an Alchemist patch. For the last like year, Alchemist has been in the F tier. And I've pretty much said every single time I made a tier list that it's either an Alchemist patch or it isn't. And uh, so he was in F tier forever because he just it wasn't an Alchemist patch. So buffs here and there, little buffs. And then all of a sudden, you know, a switch flips and now it's an Alchemist patch because he got enough buffs, enough other heroes were nerfed, and now he is very, very good. Um, I would say mid, like, I think he's strongest probably at carry. Um, second would be mid and then uh, off lane is becoming actually more viable uh, because of the reason that he is now popular is because of his unstable concoction, his stun getting buffed so much that you can actually get a point in it very early, level one even, uh, but at least one of, the, one of the points in the first three levels, you're probably going to get unstable concoction because you can spam it now, has a good stun, good damage, all these kinds of things, um, very low mana cost. It's just a great spell now. So your laning stage because of that is actually pretty good. Like you can dominate a lot of lanes. So that's why he's being played in off lane. We'll see if that becomes an actual thing or if it's just a kind of fad or whatever, if off lane alchemist uh, is sustainable. But for now, uh, mid lane is very viable. I would say you probably don't want two heavy farmers. You don't want a carry that's also a heavy farmer if you want to pick an alchemist, but he's still very viable because you can go that radiance, you can get a good timing, you can get it, you know, pre like, 15 minutes, probably 12 minutes if you're pretty good. Um, 
and then you don't really have to worry like pre 12 minutes you're not going to be worrying too much about farming it's just after that you don't want too heavy farmers and so there's a lot of carries now um if you watch the carry tier list that are heroes that can get involved early so you can if they're picking like that if your team is picking like that you can definitely get away with an alchemist and he's very very good and then lastly for a tier everyone's favorite the hero that is back that is actually good now pudge so as you might know, if you've been watching streams, if you've been looking at the meta, if you've been seeing what's been happening, people are playing Pudge in like every single position. I will say, just a little spoiler, don't play this hero as a five position just because he's good. He's not a five position hero. Don't do that. I have him in F tier in my five position list, so stop doing that. Please don't do that. But he can pretty much play every other role, including mid. He's actually back in mid for a little bit there. I thought he was going to be an off lane and a carry a little bit because I, I saw people playing him carry, but now people are playing him as a mid as well. He's pretty good. You just leave hook level one. You can, you know, if you ever hook the opponent mid laner and they don't have any mobility, like it's not a puck or something like that, you can honestly kill them really early on. You can start snowballing on this hero. You get a bunch of levels, slow and rot, uh, uh, points and rot for that slow. And then you go gank a side lane. You get a bunch of kills. You snowball off of that. It can be very, very effective. This hero is very, very good, especially with the um, change. I already talked about it, um, the change to his passive in the carry tier list, but similar kind of thing. It's just his passive now blocks all the rot damage. It blocks pretty much all the damage from his Ag's rot and just blocks so much other damage coming out from a lot of magic damage heroes that he's just so good right now. And if you start snowballing, if you get a bunch of kills early, this hero is so hard to deal with and very, very good. So that's Pudge. Always good to see Pudge being good because... Um, so many people like the hero and play the hero all the time. It's just better if he was good than if he's bad. And it's also good to see him in pros because even when he's okay in pubs, people don't pick him in pros, but people are actually kind of thinking about picking this hero in pro matches, which is very interesting and very cool to see. He can be annoying to play against, but hey, whatever. Um, he's in your games anyway. Might as well be good. So that's A tier. Next is B tier. These are all pretty much like stable mids. Um, as you can see, a lot of the spirit heroes, like I said, have been nerfed really hard. Um, kind of your classic mids aren't as good. A lot of these are kind of weird mids. You see like Keeper of the Light, Tiny, Bat Rider, Pango, Alk, Pudge. Those are all kind of like weird. They're not your, your traditional mids in a lot of ways. Um, they just have like weird aspects to them. Puck is obviously a traditional mid, but then B tier, here's when we get some more traditional mids. Um, we get like Zeus. TA is kind of more of a carry now, but can still be played mid. We have Leshrac. Uh, Kanka, we have Viper. All these heroes are just, you know, your typical mids. They're good for all the reasons that mids are usually good. I will comment, Zeus kind of has been a very bad hero for a very long time. And I wasn't necessarily sure that the change to his skills where they put his um, passive as a shard and now they gave him this jump ability as a normal ability. I wasn't so sure that was going to work. But they finally kind of buffed it enough, similar to Alchemist, where they just kept buffing him a little bit here and there. They kept buffing Zeus here and there. So now he's actually pretty viable because he's, you know, early on, it's hard to kill him in lane. He has good right-click damage. He's able to clear the wave, and if you try to get on top of him, he can just kind of run away. He can jump away. He can jump over cliffs, all those kinds of things. So he has that little mobility that allows him to be um, survivable, which is really what he needs, because this hero always has done a ton of damage. But now that he's a little bit more survivable, he has a better laning stage, and he's also better at ganking now because of that small mobility that he has. And also the fact that it does, I think it slows or reduces um, attack speed, these kinds of things. It just adds a little bit of extra, um, you know, not just damage, but actual uh, offensive kind of capability or defensive capability, um, utility, these kinds of things. Now that he has like a utility spell that's not just vision, it, it, it makes the hero way more viable. So he's actually pretty good. Um, and he can do a ton of damage as always. And then... What I will say, I skipped over Dawnbreaker a little bit here. Dawnbreaker, I kind of talked about Dawnbreaker and Marcy um, coming into Captain's Mode, uh, pros exploring how to play these heroes a little bit more, so they're kind of becoming more relevant, and Dawnbreaker is one of those heroes that is now being played in pretty much every single role, every single position, mid being one of those. I think mid is the position that this hero is not as good um, in, I think, carry or... Uh, off lane are the core roles that this hero is playing more prominently and having a better win rate. And then as a support, this hero is also semi-viable as well. Mid lane is kind of sketchy. It's not the best, but it still is viable. It's still decent. So it deserves B tier. Has decent win rate, decent pick rate. It's okay. It's just not the best position for the hero, but you can still get away with it if you want to play that hero. And then obviously there's Viper. Just 
Kanko, all these heroes just do typical things. There's nothing too special about them. They just do the normal thing that they've always done. They're just okay right now. They're viable. You can pick them. Um, no big deal. And then we have kind of the cheese heroes. We have Lone Druid, Visage, Broodmother. These heroes are viable. They're decent. They can win you games if you know how to play them, but they're not like they're not like broken by any means. Like they're not being picked a ton and winning games. Um, they're just good if you know how to play them. If you want to spam them, if you like them, you can play them and get away with it. It's totally possible. Next, we have C tier. We have Wind Ranger here. She's kind of okay. I mean, as a mid, it's like not bad. You're not going to lose. I mean, she's just decent. It's not the worst thing ever. I probably, I might say, I'm just looking at the statistics. So I put her here. My personal opinion is maybe she's a little bit lower than that. I just feel like she's underwhelming a lot, but she is still viable. It is still possible to pick her and win games. Next, we have Dragonite. Dragonite from the mid lane is just, it seems like this hero is just more of an off lane now, but you can pick this hero in the mid lane. You can have some good lanes, get the mid tower early, snowball, these kinds of things, and you are viable. Um, he's not as broken or OP as he was when the fireball was like buffed. You know, he's been nerfed a bunch since then, so he's still just not that great, but he's still viable. He can still have a good game. If you get blink, BKB, ags, these kinds of things, you can have a good game and uh, dominate with this hero. You know, his stun's still good. He still has good regen. He still always has a good laning stage, does tower damage, all these kinds of things. It's just uh, when he was OP, he just had too much with the wave clear and the fireball and all that. It's just, he's not as good. Lena is a little bit better because she was buffed a small bit. Um, on her passive, as we see the game coordinator being down, but um, I'll just keep going here. Basically, we saw her passive get changed, and then it was buffed, and I I don't know if I you know, ranted and raved about this in one of my videos, but I thought that the change to her passive was very, very bad. I mean, I, I understand conceptually why they did it, and it kind of makes sense. You're not just like spamming spells randomly in base. It's kind of weird to do that, so I get it, but they made it absolutely terrible. It was very bad. You like, It was just no way you could sustain um, stacks you couldn't uh, have stacks, like, basically, if you were just pushing a tower, you would almost have to go to a creep camp to use a spell on it and then come back to the tower to keep pushing. Same thing with if you wanted to buy Shadowblade and gank. If you lose your stacks while you're running after somebody before you reveal yourself to gank them, you're not really going to be getting full stacks unless you gank them on top of uh, on top of their creep wave. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work. So they buffed it a little bit, which makes it better, but it's still not good enough. It just isn't there yet. You still have the same exact problems as before. And so unless they make it like 30 seconds long, which I think might be OP, but it's almost what they have to do. I just don't know that this hero is going to be viable unless they buff it in other ways. Or somebody figures out some other way to play it. Like a magic damage build or something that, like, not the right click damage build. I don't know. Something something different. It does have a good laning stage, which is just, just still not that good. I spent a lot of time on Lena. Whoops. I spent a lot of time on Lena here because I like Lena. Lena is one of my favorite heroes from mid, but so that's why I kind of ranting and raving about that. But in any case, that's Lena. Invoker, uh, a decent hero. Nothing too special about Invoker. Just a kind of classic mid hero. Just not that great right now. If you're an Invoker player, though, you can get away with it. He's pretty good. Uh, Void Spirit and Ember Spirit. They're both pretty good. They're both viable. You can totally pick them if you're um, spirit heroes, if you like them. You know, I've seen Void Spirit probably a little bit better than Ember right now, but they're definitely viable. You can pick them. You can definitely win games with them. They're pretty good. They're just not nearly as good as they used to be. Void Spirit was kind of, you know, top of the pack for, I don't know, a year or two now. It's been so long. This hero's finally gotten nerfs to go, you know, just he's not as good. Ember was really good for a long time. Has been changed a little bit here and there, just not as good anymore. Um, kind of like I was saying when I talked about Puck, these heroes just are okay, but not great. And then we have kind of two cheesy heroes, Arc Warden and Meepo. They're semi-viable if you know how to play them, but they're not great. Um, these heroes, for cheese heroes, are better. So that's C tier. Next, we'll go to D tier. Necrophos was really, really good a few patches ago. Then they nerfed him a few different times, and he's just not that great anymore. I mean, you can get away with playing this hero from the mid lane, but I just think that He's probably more of an offlaner right now. Um, I think he's probably a little bit better from the offlane perspective, from the offlane role, but he is kind of semi-viable. He is decent, but I just think with his win rate, with how much he was nerfed, he just isn't that great right now. Um, he's just D tier. He deserves it based on the win rate uh, and everything. It's just, that's what it is. I, I really like the hero, but he's just not as good as he once was. DP was obviously very strong. Then they kind of 
reverted her the change to her ultimate and ever since then she's just been dead i mean she's still an okay hero but that was one of the big things that made this hero op i think maybe these two heroes the win rates and you know where they're at right here on the list is maybe a little bit deceiving i think they might be better than this but i'm just kind of basing this off of what i feel um these heroes whether i'm seeing them you know the win rates all these kinds of stuff and i think this is appropriate now we might see them come back into fruition a little bit back into the meta maybe here and there if people find that they're strong but they just they just don't seem as strong as they once were Skywrath, you can get away with this hero mid. I think it's being played more as a support because that silence is so good against heroes like Puck, um, these kinds of things. But just from the mid lane, it's kind of an all or nothing. It's just it's viable if you're good at it, but it's just not the best. Marcy, a hero like Dawnbreaker that's coming to the meta, but from the mid lane, this is just not really a mid hero. I think it's the one role that this hero just doesn't play. You can still play it if you really want to, but it's just not that good. So that's Marcy. Then we have Huskar here. Um, Huskar... I put him in D tier. I put him in F tier in the carry section because I just really don't think he can carry very well. I think he's better as a mid now just because, like, it's almost like when he's really bad, he's better as a mid because then you get more levels, you get more items, you know, you can maybe rush sooner, so that makes him semi-viable. As a carry, he just is really bad, but he's just still pretty bad all around, so that's why I put him here. SF, just not in a great spot. He hasn't been in a great spot for a long time. I almost think this hero's becoming more of a carry than a mid. I mean, you can still dominate from the mid lane, but he's just not that great. I almost would rather go right-click build on this hero than the magic damage build, but it's just so awkward. You have to choose between these two builds um, a lot of times, and I've just seen the magic damage build fall off so hard. It's just... So you want to go the right-click build, but then you're kind of playing carry from mid, and it just feels like you're, you know, you're probably not synergizing very well with your carry as well. It's just kind of a weird hero. And then Sniper here is D tier. I think he was B or C tier. I think he was B tier, actually, in the uh, in the carry tier list. And the reason why I put Sniper down here in the mid tier list is because I think I mentioned it in the carry tier list is that this hero is just too heavy of a farmer right now. It's almost too much of a carry. You don't really want to have a sniper if you want to have a carry that farms. Like, maybe you could get away with a sniper mid if you have something like a Slardar uh, carry or something like a Kunkka carry or, you know, some kind of, like, mid that's actually a mid that just goes carry. You know, something like that that doesn't want to just sit back and farm. They can get more active. Um, maybe something even like a Bristleback or something like a like a like um, an Ursa. Some of these popular carries, you can get away with that kind of, but it just feels so bad. In a lot of games, you're going to be picking sniper mid and almost like griefing your team because by the 15 minute mark, you're still not going to be that strong and you're going to be taking space away from your carry. You guys are both going to be farming and just nobody's going to get what they want out of the game, especially with Alchemist being in the game. It just doesn't feel good when you have a mid sniper. And then lastly here, we have F tier. All of these heroes are just not viable right now. Queen of Pain, I don't know what her problem really is. She was semi-strong like a while ago, but it just it's, it feels like it's been so long since this hero was good. I think there was a patch maybe six to eight months ago where she was decent. Um, but then they nerfed the shard and stuff, and I, ever since then, she's just been kind of on the down swing, and she just doesn't feel good against a lot of these heroes that are getting better. Um, Storm nerfed into oblivion. With the change with the Null Talisman and just how this hero's man, it just feels like insane with the mana. Like, compared to before, I think this might be an overreaction. I think Storm still might be, like, C tier, but just in comparison to where Storm, Storm was before, it just feels so bad to play this hero. Uh, Storm was, like, my second most played hero. I really like this hero, but right now, compared to the mana consumption that you had before, it just feels like you can't zip anywhere, and you're just, like, blowing all your mana for one kill, and it's just, it, it just feels awful. Then we have Gyro. Gyro's kind of a carry, can be played mid sometimes, and this hero's just bad. It's just bad all around. I said the same thing in the um, carry tier list. Just not good. It just needs number buffs. I don't know that it needs a conceptual change. It just, the numbers are all bad. Same thing with Mag. Mag was kind of nerfed into the ground ever since the, um, ever since TI when he was just dominating on the off lane, um, and these kinds of things. But, uh, yeah, the problem is the hero was nerfed into the ground. They changed the ags to make it, like, terrible. It's probably the worst ags in the entire game. It's absolutely abysmal. It's just not good. Not a good win rate. I mean, you can still get away with it, probably. RP is always going to be good, but just not a great hero right now. Tinker nerfed into Oblivion after it was OP. Nothing really to say about that. They kind of just nerfed into Oblivion on purpose because it was just really annoying. People hate Tinker. So, <laughs> Tinker's either OP. Tinker's just like Alchemist. He's either up here or down here. It's one or the other. Not, not uh, either or. And then Pugna, Pugna was really OP as a support, um, and then because he was OP as a support, he was kind of up in the little higher tier, maybe C tier or something before as a mid, but now that he's terrible as a support, he's always been worse as a mid, and now he's just terrible and not viable as a mid really at all right now. 
And then OD. OD is just not an OD patch. I feel like OD is kind of like Tinker. It's kind of like one of these heroes who's all or nothing. Um, you're either really good with it, and it's a very good patch for it, or it's not. And right now, it just doesn't seem like it's a good patch for it. Ever since they changed, I think, Meteor Hammer and the way it works and stuff like that, the way the damage is and all that, it just feels like this hero needs to be reworked. A build needs to be changed. Something. This is just one of these heroes that they keep reworking here and there, and it just never really fits. It's either way too powerful or way too bad. Um, so that's OD. And that is the mid tier list for patch 7.31D. As always, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. If you want a hero to be higher or lower, those kinds of things. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those things. And also join the Discord if you haven't already. Join my Patreon. Go there for coaching if you want coaching. Or if you just want to see videos like this into the future, consider supporting me there. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.